in here to melt. I went and filled up my waters, which include a cold water, a hot water, and another cold water. The cold water is for the initial rinse in my hoses when I'm done milking. Then I have hot water that I add soap to for the second rinse in my hoses. And then the third bucket is a cold water with bleach in it to sterilize and clean, again, the milk hoses one time, one time done milking. So after I do all that, I fill her um, bucket with grain and bring her on into the stanchion. She milks out in usually five to seven minutes, and I'm getting around two gallons per day, give or take. Sorry, two gallons per milking, give or take. Around four gallons a day. When she came to us, she came from a local dairy, and she was milking out around seven gallons a day, which was way more than we needed. So it worked out that her supply decreased. It decreased because in a dairy situation, they are eating hay Aylin all day long. They just stand and eat and stand and eat. And here we um, we give them feed twice a day and then she gets rain when she's milking. So it's a little bit different. So change in feed decreases her supply. And then of course I'm using kind of a home milking system and not a big commercial system for milking. When she came home, she milked so much so fast that the milk overflowed my tank and then went into my vacuum pump and completely ruined it. So I did hand milk for two days. It took me about 30 minutes to get it out two and a half gallons. And um, I have a torn tendon right now, so that made it harder because you need your pinky. When you hand milk, you squeeze at the top and then you kind of curl down with your pinkies and you have kind of this motion. So it was not easy to do, but I made it work. And then thankfully I have a good friend who has this simple pull system. I have a couple friends who are local and have simple pull systems that they let me borrow. It's great, it's, it's really easy, I love it. They are a little bit spendy, so I'm saving up my penny so I can buy one, but I'm very thankful that for now, I have one that I can borrow. Um, so she's probably getting pretty close to being done. I check every once in a while to see how she's looking. If she slows down, I do massage her under a little bit to try and get her to get another let down or have a little bit more flow. And yeah, she's going, she's still going. So I also check my milk bucket just to see where I'm at. But it's usually about three quarters full by the time she's done milking. So one of the things you didn't see was my process before I put the machine on her. I always have two clean cloths, not clean now, but one I use warm soapy water not to clean her udder to get all the dirt off and if she's been laying out in the field or anything like that. And then I, I dip all of her teats with this, um, it's a pre and post teat dip uh, with iodine in it. Let that sit for about 30 seconds and then I have another clean cloth and I wipe that off and I use a different side of my cloth for each of her teats to make sure I don't do any kind of cross contamination. And then I do a couple of, um, with each teat, I hand milk a couple squirts into this strip cup, which basically allows me to look at the milk to make sure there's no chunks, it doesn't look abnormal, so I know that there's no infection or issue. And then once a week I do a mastitis check with a kit that I have. So pretty easy, it's not fancy. We are just one family. I'm not trying to do anything big here besides get you know, milk that we can use. So we keep it pretty simple. This summer, our big plan is to hopefully expand our barn. So this space in here will have walls in it, uh, all walls, in it, walls on it all the way up. And then the area that we have next to us would become a, an area that we have our tack in and then a sink. So I don't have to do the whole bucket wash situation. All of our feed would come over here and then we'd have a separate area to store our hay. So fingers crossed that that happens this summer. But this this is, this setup right now works perfectly fine for me. Uh, another friend had a cart like this, or two both friends, and it worked well for them and it's been great. I just kind of pull it over to her get her set up, and then when she's done, I push it back. And I'm just going to check her really quick. She's starting to slow down, so I do a little bit of a massage on her. The other thing I do is if she's still flowing, I check her feet and I give her like another half scoop of grain to keep her happy there, or she starts eating the alfalfa. She's pretty good about standing. She doesn't really want to go anywhere. So I'm coming in to get her and realize I never even put, there's a line over here that I usually put to her halter to keep her here. Maybe I don't need that because she's staying here. Patsy, come on. And then it's just this process of 
convincing her to come out because now she has endless supply of alfalfa. So I typically come over to the other side, grab a plank of alfalfa, try to encourage her to come out with it. Here, look at, I have alfalfa right here. Come on. Let's go this way, pop out. So that is the entire process in a nutshell of milking Patsy, our family milk cow. I hope that this gives our viewers an idea of what it's like to have a family milk cow when you don't have a fancy setup. If you're thinking about getting a family milk cow and you've been on the fence, do it. It is so worth it. We are very fortunate to reap the benefits of all of the milk that she gives us and make cheese and cream cheese and sour cream and butter and ice cream, of course. The kids love the ice cream. So it is work, it definitely is work, but very, very much uh, worth it. So I hope that you've enjoyed watching this video and um, have seen that it's totally possible for, for almost anyone to do. We're very thankful that we have good guidance and help from friends around us that have been doing this for a little bit, but we're, we're definitely getting the hang of it. So please subscribe below and come along on some more crazy adventures on our farm.